to go to the Broad River WMA. I was going to go yesterday with my dogs and just spend all day out there. Um, it's only 440 acres. So it's nice because some of these um, WMAs, let me see if I can lower this a little bit so I can lean back. There we go. Lower just a little bit. Sorry, if it, I should have I should have had this adjusted before I started. Okay, I think that's better. Okay, so um, yesterday I was gonna go to the Broad River WMA because it's a small WMA, only about an hour from my house. And my I love to go to WMAs because when I go to state parks and places where um, there's gonna be other people around, I have to have my dogs on a leash. It's only uh, considerate. It's the only considerate thing to do. So I like to go to these WMAs because, first of all, I have to scout those areas anyways because I'm just now starting to hunt at 40 years old. <laughs> I never thought I would be a hunter, ever, because I love animals. I love hiking and bird watching. I have my binoculars. I love nature. So I never thought I would be a hunter because hunter kill animals, right? And I, I, I now have a completely different perspective on it, especially now that I've actually caught a bass you know, out of the Chattahoochee, brought it home, cooked it, and ate it. I now really understand. The feeling is indescribable. Knowing that I, I took this, I saw this alive, I, the excitement of pulling them out of the water. And then that, that sadness, knowing that, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to kill him, you know. Um, I, didn't have the, I didn't have the heart to do it, so I just put it in my icebox and let him just freeze. <laughs> so once, once, he, once I knew he was, he was gone, then I gutted him. And I, put the, I, left the, I put, threw the guts over um, so the catfish can eat it, you know, and I try to, you know, give back to nature. Anyways, it really does – I understand what Clay Hayes is talking about now when he, feel, when he says that every time he takes down a deer and he, he stands over the deer that he just caught, he says that he feels this – overwhelmed with emotion. A lot of hunters cry uh, because of the beauty of the animal and knowing that they, they just took the life of one of God's majestic creatures in order for their family to have this food to live, this nourishment. And he says that he, says that he feels indebted to the, to the um, you know, whatever, whatever it is, elk, moose, deer, whatever it is, he, he feels indebted to it. And he says it makes him want to be a better father, a better husband, a better person in this world because otherwise that animal's life he took it for nothing you know he's wasting his life not only is he wasting his life he's dishonoring that animal that the animal's life that he took so he's saying like he, he the best way to honor those animals is to go out there and live his best life and do the best he possibly can be, and make the boat most of his time here knowing what it cost to keep us alive here and I really love that. People who go out there because they love killing animals, those are criminals. That's, that's called poachers. Anyways, why am I talking about that? Oh, yeah, that's right. Because, <laughs> because I'm about to take my dogs to the WMA. And we're going to spend all day there. The Broad River, like I said, is a small 440-acre uh, piece of land. And it goes right up to the Broad River. And there's this, one, there's this place where it's kind of rocky a little bit. And you can see the river flowing. I'm going to go there and try to catch some trout. <laughs> So I'm going to go not only scout because um, starting next Sunday, squirrel season starts and there's lots of good reasons why it's good to keep the squirrel population under control because they, you know, they kill trees pretty much. They dig into trees. Anyways, um, so I want to find some good spots. So I want to go scouting and fishing and I have my dogs there. They're just going to be off leash. We're just going to go exploring. But before I do that, hey, what's up, Claire? Before I do that, I did want to jump on just because I have a moment. Today's my day off. Um, I, I want to talk about a lot of groomers, myself included. Um, we really have no exit strategy, a lot of them. If you, if you actually, um, a lot of groomers that I talk to and I ask them, what's your exit strategy? You know, the groomers that have their own shop or their own salon or their own mobile grooming business um, or groomers that do house call like myself. I ask them. What is your exit strategy? You know, what is your plan? Do you have a plan in place? Of, do you have an idea of what you're going to do if either, A, something happens to us, we get injured, we get sick, we have to be hospital, something happens to us where we can't groom anymore, all right? Because we trick ourselves, we kid ourselves in thinking that we have a business. As long as I'm the owner of this, of June the Groomer, or when I had my shop, the Ferific Spa, we think, okay, now that I have a shop, I'm a business owner, right? 
Not really. Not until you can put a system in place where that that um, operation, that organization, right, operates without you there. Whether you're there or not, it will still function day to day, and it will still bring in money. It will still provide an income. That is a business. Uh, groomers, we usually we don't have a business. Some groomers are very business minded and entrepreneurial, and um, they have set up like multiple location shops. And they don't really groom anymore. They just kind of oversee their shops and they have people in place. That's a business, right? Because they could literally die or sell it to someone else and the business will still run. Um, but a lot of business, a lot of groomers who have their own shops, if they don't go in, their shop doesn't really run. I mean, yeah, of course, um, some they, they can schedule like a week or so where they go on vacation or go, on, go to trade show or something like that. And they have their staff. Um, you know, run the shop for about a week, but that whole week, I, I guarantee you, they're not really able to relax. They're checking in because that business that needs that groomer there, kind of, right? Uh, myself included. So yeah, I mean, and and especially if you have a if it's if it's named something like groom Jim the groomer or grooms by, you know, so and so or. So and so's grooming shop. You know, if your name is attached to that business, now it's even harder. I mean, there's nothing that I could sell. You know, um, and the thing is, like, I, me, in my personal situation, I realize it's almost impossible for me to go out of business. <laughs> almost. I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but it's now almost impossible to go out of business because uh, some of my gr- my clients, even when I treated them rudely, when I was going through that emotional, you know. <laughs> phase uh, a couple of months ago. And I realized when I get mad, I get really mad and I stay angry at the whole world for a while. And I don't even realize it. I wake up day to day thinking I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm just now determined, you know, I'm not taking anyone's shit anymore. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm focused now. No, really I was angry because I'm not really like that. <laughs> and so, oh, actually, let me turn on here so I don't have to read the, what's up Lady Grey? Lady Grey J. She's not just Lady Grey. She's Lady Grey J. Lady J. Lady Grey. <laughs> no. Okay. Anyways, I'm sorry. Let me before I get lost in another tangent. That doesn't even matter. What I'm what I'm saying though is, um, for me, I've lucked out because I had my shop. I started ten years ago, right? Um, 2012. And when I had my shop, um. I, I believed in what I was doing so much that I was willing to go out of business for it. And my clients saw that. They saw that I was unwilling to raise my prices to, to make what I needed to make because I didn't feel right charging like 200 250 for a dog, which is what I needed to charge for the overhead and the amount of dogs I was doing because I wasn't just shaving dogs down. I believed that I wanted to provide a different option. Not that I'm better or worse or anyone's better, not comparing anything. I'm just saying... At the time and even now, I'm pretty much one of the only options you have if you're a dog owner here in Georgia that has a multi poo, um, doodle, um, shizu, any dog with long hair that you don't want shaved like an alpaca. Um, I'm pretty much one of the only options you have uh, to as a groomer where I will go and I'll spend two, three hours combing out all of that junk, all the mess that's deep in the skin that's causing the matting. So I clear out everything, all the issues going on with the skin. Skin care is what I focus on. Um, but I try to do a really good job on the haircuts too because <laughs> I don't want people to look at my haircuts and say, aha, uh-huh, if my haircuts look like that, I'd focus on skin care too. <laughs> you know? I don't want my, that to be an excuse. You know, I can't really do good haircuts, so I'm going to focus on skin care. <laughs> you know? No, I want, I, so that's why my haircuts do look good because I know that that's all people care about and that's all people look at. And that's what they think, they, that's what they think they're paying me for. They're not. They're at, that haircut took me 30, 40 minutes. Easy. Um, well, easy now, but before it was very difficult. Um, but now I've gained, I've gotten skill, experience, haircuts easy. The three, four hours I spend sweating, my elbows hurting because that constant motion, you know, shoulders hurting. That's what I do. So that's kind of how I branded myself. So that's another topic that I, we, we can talk about is branding. How do you want to br- separate yourself from the crowd? What separates you from the crowd, right? For me, is it that I go do competition? I do really beautiful haircuts and I'm all the, you know, no. 
for me, I go in pretty much like natural Dan. No, I'm ta- talking about like I don't have anything fancy or anything. I just go in grooming scrubs. You know, I just set up. Nothing fancy about me, even though I'm working in really fancy homes. It's pretty interesting, but <laughs> every time, every time I punch my code in, and these gates open up to these mansions, and I drive into these be- freaking beautiful homes, and my car is covered in dirt because I was just at the w- <laughs> wildlife management area driving those gravel <laughs> roads on my two- 2015 Corolla. So my Corolla is covered in dirt, dirt splash, <laughs> splattered everywhere and everything, and I roll up in this thing. And then I get out all, you know, tie my hair, you know, like I do not act like uh, some elitist or anything. I do not act like some luxurious groomer. I act like a guy that just came out of the woods and I'm about to groom your dog. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Um, So I am proof that as long as you do a really good job and as long as you do a really good job branding yourself, right? So people know what to expect when you come. They, They know what you're, what you stand for, what you're about, right? Your brand then it doesn't really matter you know like one time this one lady just as a joke she said oh oh you know that's so they look so wonderful they're so happy she's like can I, can you groom me next and her friend was there and you know they were just it was just a light joke right and i said <laughs> i got tired of uh, using the mud, muzzle joke like oh i don't think i have a muzzle that fits you know i reused jokes and that one got just old and worn out so i didn't want to use that one again right so i tried to think of another one really quick off the fly first thing that came to my mind is only if I get to squeeze your anal glands. <laughs> yeah, that one did not go over. That one did not land well, um, especially her friend. I saw her friend's facial expression, uh, you know, and that's when I realized, ooh, it's awkward in here. <laughs> I just made it real awkward. Sorry about that. And um, yeah, so anyways, but hey, I still groom her dog. <laughs> She just, she just doesn't joke like that with me anymore because she understands that I take it over overboard. I go over the line, you know? So it's like, hey, dude, that was the edge. Why did you jump over? You know, it's like, because that's what I do. You know, I'm an edge jumper, okay? Don't, let, don't take me to the edge. I'm going to jump. Um, so keep me far away from there, okay? Let's just keep the conversations away from the edge and you won't have to worry about me jumping. Um, anyways. So my, that's proof that as long as you do a really good job and you're consistent and they know your, your work and your quality is reliable, you can get away with almost anything, almost anything, almost anything. <laughs> Had I actually chased around her house, come here, let me squeeze your anal glands. I don't think I would be invited back. So I say, I say, don't take it too far. You know what I'm saying? Almost anything you can get away with. If you're just good at what you do and you are consistent and they know that they can rely on that, um, that uh, consistent uh, quality, right? That you pr- that you provide. They know it's there, so they will they will put up with some in- inappropriate jokes that make them feel uncomfortable in front of their friend. <laughs> okay, so let me click this here so I can read the um, comments here on my laptop. This old laptop that I cannot really use for anything else because my new laptop that I bought got I I can't say stolen. Um, I abandoned at a crazy woman's house. And I hope you're watching this because you're a stalker and you're weird and you're crazy and you lied about everything. And I lost a lot of shit and I'm trying not to be resentful. So hopefully you're watching this. I'd like my laptop back. Oh yeah, my ear pods. That was 200 fucking bucks, dude. My ear pods. Could you, could you return my other ear pods back? Anyways, in my fucking VR Oculus, it's all good though. I, I told myself I was spending way too much time on that VR. <laughs> it's probably a good thing I left it for her kids because they need a way to escape that crazy bitch. Um, Claire says, my exit, stra- my exit strangely, <laughs> your exit strangely is, I'm kidding, Claire. I'm sorry. I should not tease somebody who actually joins in and co- I, <laughs> it's like I, I recognize who Claire is. Why would I make fun of her? You know what I'm saying? Like, why don't I just save those jokes for people who I've never, I don't recognize their name? I'm like, this is a stranger. And then I can make fun of them. But no, not Claire. I know what she meant. My exit strategy, which is spelled strangely, <laughs> is retirement or die. Yeah, that's, that's, that is basically a lot of, and the thing is, a lot of groomers don't even, that doesn't even occur to them until you ask them, what's your exit strategy? What are you going to do when, when you can't physically groom anymore? What are you going to do? A lot of people, that's when it occurs to them. I guess I'll die now. <laughs> I guess I'll just die. Um, I started late as a groomer. I'm about to start a pension. 
I should have done years ago. I work from home and put money, uh, put money by now. Probably, probably meant away now for when I take time off. She's so excited. She's so t- excited to be chatting with you and the groomer right now. She can't even type right. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. I understand. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's all good. You know, when you're staring at a demigod. Anyways, um, Bonnie Park says hi from Columbus, Ohio. Hi, Bonnie. Hope you're still here. <sighs> Beatrice Rosario, what's up, Beatrice? Helen Daniel, Helen, the, your your book cover uh, that I that I promised I would take a picture and email to you is still in my car. I'll do it. I will do it today. You know what? Lesson learned. Don't freaking make promises that you're not gonna keep. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a picture of it and I'm gonna email it to you today. Today. Fuck that, man making excuses all the time, saying I'm busy when actually I'm just out fishing and all that. Girls got issues, says. Girls got issues. I've got issues. No wonder we get along. I've been dreaming. I've been dreaming and now writing content to open a grooming school in Texas. Okay. Okay. Um, While I lived there, it was nearly impossible to learn to groom. Groomers are in high demand, but there just aren't enough. Yeah. Yeah. So Girls Got Issues, that was actually one of my exit strategies as well. I scrapped that idea because I realized I don't like admin. I don't like bookkeeping. I don't like being in charge of things. I don't like worrying about having to tell people what to do, making sure they did it, following up with them. I don't like all this shit. I, ever since I was a kid, ever since I can remember, I would like to skip in the forest, in the woods, with a dog, my neighbor's dog, because I didn't have dogs when I was kids, but my neighbor, in the 80s, in the 1980s, there weren't even any leash laws back then. I mean, this dog would just run around and around his yard, and we lived out in the country area, and like the very rural area of New Jersey, and there's all these woods and everything behind our house, and so, yeah, um, Bear and I, <laughs> this big, white, fluffy, someone, it would Bear and I would just go playing around in the forest, you know, and, and just exploring. That's what I like to do ever since I was a kid. I've always been a loner. I've always been comfortable, not not comfortable by myself, because I always would feel like, man, wouldn't it be nice to sit with the other kids and, you know, play with the other kids. But the other kids would have bikes sometimes. They would have other shit that I don't have, because I, you know, just wasn't in the cards for me. Um, So I wouldn't, I don't know. I've always just I've learned, I've learned to get comfortable alone. And I guess after so long, you know, four decades of it, I'm 40 years old now, I've just gotten good at it, I guess. And I'm not good at working with others. I don't play well with others. I realize that. Um, so yeah, I just, I realized uh, starting a school, a grooming school was my dream here. I was going to just make it really small, just get a small retail space and just, you know, get a few students, start with like maybe five students. But even that requires a lot of paperwork and everything, red tape. Um, you can't legally charge tuition unless you're uh, approved, unless you're, you know, approved by the state board of education. You know, and in order to do that, you have to turn in a curriculum and all this stuff. And it takes a long time, you know, a lot of legal work, a lot of paperwork, a lot of applications that need to be filled out. I'm just not, you know, and... Then I would have to have some staff, right? And that means, you know, payroll taxes, payroll, I gotta write chat, ah. you know? And then I gotta make sure they're actually doing what the fuck I asked them to do because I'm fucking paying them now. <laughs> I'm kidding. But um, yeah, I mean, I remember sometimes writing the check to the groomers that I hired and just thinking, man, I wish I was taking that much home for myself. You know, shit, man, I'm, pay- I'm like drowning here. You know, I'm paying all the bills and everything. I'm barely keeping my head above water. And this motherfucker walks home with this. <laughs> no, I was kidding. They deserved it. You know what I'm saying? You can't work people for free. That's crazy. But as a business owner, sometimes you do feel that way. You're just like, you know, because you eat all the shit. You eat all the shit. And then your employees get to eat the fruits of your labor. You know, it's like, oh, man, I was I wish I could enjoy some of those fruits. And I do enjoy some of those fruits. But after you got a mouthful of shit in your mouth, you know, fruit just doesn't taste the same. You know what I'm saying? So I realized I don't want to be a boss. I don't want to be an entrepreneur. I just want to be an artist, you know, just create, you know. And this is what I'm doing. I'm creating content right here. I'm even thinking when I move to Alaska, I'm going to really get into bow making, become a real skilled bowyer, 
you know, make wooden bows, the wooden long bows, maybe even recurve bows too out of wood and maybe start selling those on um, eBay and stuff like that. Um, you know, there's lots of things that we can do to replace our income as groomers. We're creative. We're hard workers. You know, we work a very thankless job. If you think about it yesterday, I texted the client. I told them your dog makes me not want to groom him anymore. You know, because he's just a brat. He's just a like scared brat that he's terrified of everything. First of all, that doesn't make anything easy. And then he's a brat. Like he doesn't like when things don't, he doesn't get what he wants, you know? And he bit me yesterday. And if I did not have that puncture wound, I don't think anybody would, I wouldn't even even believe that he bit me. Cause yes, cause we, we like, he was, we're so affectionate and everything. But anyways, yeah, so the dogs sometimes don't even feel appreciative of what you've done, all the hard work that you did. The dogs don't really appreciate it. They're just like, man, get the fuck out of my house and bark at you. I'm just like, what? And then um, the, the owners a lot of times don't really understand how hard you worked or what you put it in. You know, all the anxiety that you had to deal with because the dogs won't stay still sometimes and you're working with really sharp objects. You don't want to hurt the dog by accident, you know, have, have an emergency trip to the vet. A lot's going on. We are very capable. We are we are very talented and skillful and hardworking. There are so many things we can do to replace our income. We don't have to groom dogs. Remember that. You're grooming dogs because you're choosing to groom dogs. And people who don't appreciate you, you do not have to groom their dogs. There is no groom police out there that people can call and they're going to come and arrest you because you refuse to groom someone's dog. Nobody can force you to groom someone's dog, you know? So I'm being very choosy now. Um, but yeah, like even though I fired most of my clients, and I do have a few open days now on my, on my calendar. Before it was packed, even the weekends. But now I have weekends open, <laughs> some dates, you know, like, oh my God, you know? Like it's almost like missing some teeth, you know? Someone punch a bunch of teeth out of my calendar. Um, <laughs> it's like, dude, this guy's in rough condition. But the thing is, I do have enough now to cover my bills, you know, um, I'm a little tight, but it's fine. And these clients that I have right now that stuck with me, I can't shake them, dude. I can't shake them. They seem the worst now and I still can't shake them. So they're, they're with me, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm saying for me, um, as long as I choose to do this, I literally don't think I can go out of business here in Georgia, here in Atlanta. I just put in too much work. You know they say, don't judge the day by the by the harvest, but by the by the seeds you plant. I, it's true. Plant plant good seeds, and water them, take care of them, and then years later, you know, back in 2012 when I started my shop, I was planting seeds with every client. I would have conversations with them, teaching them about the the importance of skincare on their dogs, and and I would try to educate them, you know, to help them see their dogs differently. And then I would tell them, this conversation means more to me than taking payment, you know? And I would uh, plant these seeds because I, I realized that that quote was true. Don't judge the day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds you plant, right? So that was 10 years ago. I took care of them as best I could, and then I had to leave, right? Then I came back, right? Back in 2015, I believe, I came back. So, and then because of the work that I put into the ground, right, it was honest work, the, the trees grew. There was fruit here for me to pick, you know, the fruits of my labor I put in back in 2012. When I came back in 2015, it was still there, right, because it was honest work. And then um, I, I was able to get more, keep planting seeds, planting seeds over the years. And now um, in 2021... I have this big break, blow up, you know, this emotional outburst because someone took advantage of me and I felt tricked. I felt lied to. I, I was. And I, I and then I started to see it everywhere. I started seeing everybody as liars. And that was not right. And I took it out on everyone. And, I, and that was not that was very immature of me. I understand that. And I, I feel embarrassed. I feel really bad. I did the same thing I did when I went through the divorce. I blew up on everyone. Um, I need to stop that, you know, how many times I'm going to do that, you know, I just need to stay away from women is what it is. <laughs> it seems like every time I get involved with a woman, I, oh, I'm all in, 
And then when it doesn't work out, I hate the whole world. So I just need to stop dealing with women um, in a romantic, uh, you know, any, in any kind of romantic setting, you know, like I need to just be fine with hanging out with women uh, on just a completely platonic friendship level. And that's it. Don't even touch my hand, dude. Six feet. You know what I'm saying? Stay six feet away from me. Um, let me see here. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's see. Girls got issues. In-home grooming has set me apart from other groomers in my area. There are several vans around, but some people like to see what their pet is going through. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That was a big plus, too, for me. That was a big advantage. Our clients loved being able to stay there and watch what I was doing. And also, um, even if they weren't, because they're busy. A lot of my clients are super busy. Busier than I ever thought anybody would be if they had that kind of money. And I'd be like, Dude, you're done. <laughs> you know, look out, look at what you got, dude. Just chill, relax in your pool. I mean, no, it's like it's, it's almost like when you the higher you get, you have to even you have to pedal even faster to maintain that level. So, yeah, I, I understand that a lot of times my clients can't stay and watch me, but they have cameras in their homes. You know what I'm saying? And so they can watch me through the cameras later. If anything, if their dog acts strangely that night, they can go back and watch what I what happened. You know what I'm saying? So. Not all women are bad, June, says Helen Daniels. All right, I'm moving to the UK. Let's put it to the test, Helen. <laughs> um, let's see. Claire says, I had to close my books because my mother is very ill. I know another groomer I just spoke to recently. Her shop is just kind of sitting there going negative. Her business, she had to close everything. She can't close her business account because it's in the negative. It's really bad. It's really bad. Um and I really can't, I really don't want to talk about it. I was going to, but I can't because at this point, I think she needs to uh, go the legal route and sue this particular shampoo company. Yeah, I'm not going to go any further than that. Um, let's see here. But yeah, we really have to think about it, you know? So she, she, that conversation really has me thinking more and more. Do groomers really know what they're going to do? Do they have any plans? Do they have any options of what to do? If something happens to your health, to a family member, or something happens, shoot, the pandemic, we might go through another lockdown. You know, how many groomers can survive another two, three week lockdown? You know what I'm saying? I I can't financially, but I have clients who last time when I had to do that, they sent me, they Venmo me a bunch of money, a lot of money. Yeah. And I was about to fire them too. <laughs> and I, oh man. Anyways, because I'm an asshole. Okay. Let me see here. Terry K. What's up, Terry K? How are you? Um, from sunny California. And do not super text me. Oh my God. Do not, do not give me any more money, Terry. Seriously. It's, I'm, I'm going to start feeling like, am I, am I streaming live just in hopes that Terry might come on and give me some money? By the way, how much you got? <laughs> no, <I'm scared. laughs> Anyways, um, but Terry, seriously, know that I appreciate you so much. Thank you for being here. Um, Let's see. Helen Daniels, no worries. I forgive you. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing it. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to, when I get in my car, that's the first thing I'll do. I'll take a picture of it and then I'll email it to you. Um, Claire, because I'm not going into the, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm going to spend the day out in the forest with my dogs doing a little fishing. Um, the reason why they call it fishing and not catching, because <laughs> that's all I do sometimes is just, I'm fishing. I'm not catching shit. Um, let's see. Claire Charleston, in Scotland, we say put money by. I'll now, I'll now will say put money away for you Americans. I need to wear glasses, but I'm fighting against it. So suck it up, suck it up, my typos, dude. Also, rubbish feller too. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, um, girls got issues. We do a, we do have a lot in common. Also, always been a loner. Texas school board is pretty lenient with curriculum. Get it approved. Open school, good and bad, doable. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. How about webinar that people pay you for? That's actually what I was thinking too. Um, one of my clients told me about Udemy. Um, she's saying that she takes photography uh, lessons and stuff from courses from Udemy, and you just make the webinar. You make it once. You record it and edit it, and you put it out once on Udemy. And every time someone takes it, you get paid. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And she was saying that if, if I wanted to, she, you know, I could use like a big white screen kind of, you know, as a background. And some people have even offered, let, let me use like, you know, their place or, you know, like a, almost like a nice, you know, studio kind of thing. 
So yeah, there are options. There are options, and now that I have time, I can entertain that because. Yeah, I mean, before I would tell them I'm working seven days a week, you know. And yesterday, I groomed two dogs. Yesterday, this morning, I felt it, man. Oh my god, I felt it this morning. Like it's it's really getting harder on my body. And when I was in my 30s, I was, you know, like it was easy for me to not easy, but I would recover much faster. Um, but now I'm 40, I feel it. It takes a it takes a little bit extra for me to recover, you know, and, and I, I I move a little slower in the morning, you know, I feel it. Um, let's see here. Um, girls got issues. Oh, actually, have you heard are you near San Antonio? There's a San Antonio School of Dog Grooming, I think, or something like that. Huh, let me see here. Okay, so there's Cool Dog Spa, pet grooming that offers pet grooming classes. You know, grooming Academy, there it is. Yes, in Converse, Texas, San Antonio Grooming Academy. Um, I remember meeting, um, oh shoot, she's gonna kill me. What's her freaking name? Oh my God, Um, hold on one second. I think it's Andre. Man, but anyways, I met the <laughs> I met the owner of that um, grooming school. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm logged out of Facebook. Will let me go ahead? No, no. Nope. Okay, that's all good. Whatever. But anyways, um, it's the San Antonio no San Antonio Dog Grooming School or something like that. Uh, but yeah, maybe instead of uh, girls got issues, maybe you could see if you could become a teacher, like an instructor at, at like a, a, that was another thing I was thinking, since I don't like all the admin and I don't want to be the boss, I don't want to be in charge of everything. You know, I like to just put my head down, do my work, you know, and not be bothered with other people or not have to worry if someone else is doing their job. I don't care. Um, so yeah, I, I, I was thinking maybe I can get a job as a grooming instructor at a, at a already established school. That was one of my um, thoughts as well. So I don't know. Um, Girls Got Issues says, I recently took a webinar to learn Asian fusion. It was $75 and there were several participants on Zoom. This groomer does a webinar weekly. Nice money. Yeah, $75 um, and there are several participants. Yeah, I mean, the thing is though, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. There was this one groomer and he had contacted me and he was like, Hey, you, you, you seem like you have so much potential and all this stuff. He was like, I, I really think we can, you know, work together and you can learn a lot from me. And, you know, he was like, I think I have a lot to offer you and everything. And I was like, where's this going? And it's this big, long message. And I'm reading further and further. And he's like, um, you know, check out my course. I really think you, you could uh, benefit from this one course. And if you, after you take this course, let me know. And, you know, maybe I can be able to work with you. So I clicked on it. Fucking course costs a thousand dollars. I was like, what the fuck? I'm not going to pay no fucking thousand dollars for a fucking web course. So just so I have the opportunity, a chance that you'll work with me, create me or something, make me into a, 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 a I don't know, an influencer in the industry or something. It's like, dude, go fuck yourself, man. I didn't even reply. I didn't reply back. I mean, I was just like, <laughs> anyways. Um, Helen Daniels, I love being a dog groomer. Even on bad days, there's always a good day to make it all worthwhile. I love that attitude, Helen. And that shows me right there that you were meant to be a dog groomer, you know, because, I mean, like everyone has bad days. You know, but knowing that you love what you do and that that passion and that, you know, it, it almost calls to you. Right. And then you and you feel like it's pulling you that that passion, that love, that that motivation that you have, that inner inner inspiration, you know, that you have to keep doing your job. That's what carries you through those bad days. You know, like yesterday, it really was kind of deflated. Maybe that's why I felt more tired afterwards, because at least when a dog appreciates what you did and they're like happy and you know, like it feels better, but that, having that dog bark at me and he bit me and oh yeah, I just I just wanted to leave that house as fast as I could. I didn't even say bye to him because I was upset with him, and yeah, it almost made me feel like I don't want to do this anymore, especially that dog, you know. 
and yeah, maybe that's why I, I just felt more achy and tired this morning. You know, I don't know. <clears throat> but it, because it's very emotional. The work we do is very emotional. You know, it's not just physical. It's very emotional. Um, because we're working with dogs. We're working with animals that we love. You know, not that one. <laughs> um, let's see. Yes, please. Six feet. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Everybody stay six feet away from me. You know what I'm saying? I need everybody to keep their hands to themselves when you're around me, okay? I know it's tempting. I know for some reason you don't even realize that your hand's just going, uh, you know? No. Catch yourself and say, this man, he just looks like an angel from heaven fallen to earth. You know, he just looks like perfection defined, right? Look at this. You know what I'm saying? Oh, how do I do that? Okay, like, like, okay, like, look, look, look at this, right? I understand. I don't, I'm not mad. <laughs> I, I totally get it. But when you find your hands creeping my way like this, just, if I could just get a touch, you know, I'll say, hey, six feet, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or anyways, okay. Let me just uh, get back on topic here. Um, not all women are bad, June. Yeah, that's right. Uh, definitely do a webinar, June. Passive income once you've done it. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was even thinking uh, maybe when I, oh, you know what? Tomorrow I have one dog in the morning and then I I was going to groom my dog, Weemi, because he's, he's looking kind of, I like to keep him very long, full coat, because when we're out there in the, in the wildlife management areas, there are no trails. There's game trails like trails that have been made by animals going the same route every day. Um, so there's game trails that we, we try to follow, but every, like it, it just ends out of nowhere. You're following this game trail and then all of a sudden it's just gone and you're yeah. stuck in like wooded area again, you know, the forest, the thick forest. And when um, my dogs are out there with me, Angel and Dexter, they're bigger. You know, I, I don't really worry about them. Angel a little bit. I have to keep an eye on her because she's blind. She's, like she can still see, I can tell that she can still see a little bit like light um, and she's deaf. I can yell at, yell for her. When I clap, sometimes she'll turn. Cause I think it's the vibration from the clapping, not the actual noise. Um, so I have to keep an eye on her so she doesn't just wander off, you know? Um, but yeah, my dog Dexter, he's like sleeping, you know? But Weenie is a Shizu Maltese mix. He's smaller. And I just feel like, you know, if a snake tries to bite him or something, I want that hair to be there as a layer of protection. So the snake bites the hair and not him, you know, or if an animal tries to attack him or something, a coyote comes, they'll grab him and they'll grab his hair. It's happened at the dog park before too. dog, uh, like a pit bull or something. This one pit bull tried to grab him, pin him to the ground, but he had to pin Weemi to the ground to actually get him because he kept grabbing the hair, not Weemi. And so I was like, you know, I, I want to keep him as full as possible, but he also gets pretty dirty now. And I was and his hair's all grown in over his eyes and everything. His hair's like down here now. So I was thinking, I think I'm going to give him a haircut tomorrow since we're going to be spending the day out in the woods today. Um, you know, let him get dirty and everything more. And then tomorrow after I get off of work, maybe I can set up my table. I'll set up my camera and just go through the groom and show you. I won't even, because I do comb him out when I get home, but I won't really do much else so that he looks as horrible as possible. And then tomorrow I can uh, go ahead and set up and I'll show you, you know, start to finish. And he's in full coat, but I'll give him a little trim, you know, just to show you guys um, if you want to keep your dog long, but, you know, still want him round and nicely shaped, how to do that. So yeah, we'll, let's do that tomorrow. It will give me good practice. Um, because if, if I'm going to charge for it, <laughs> can't be busting, you know, anal gland jokes. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And I can't be talking about, like, a cat doing crack in the corner with a, <laughs> with a mouse shooting up on the toilet. I can't be talking about stuff like that, you know, when I'm char if I'm going to be charging for it. So I got to I gotta practice cleaning up my, cleaning up my act. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, maybe tomorrow I'll groom wee me. Um, on YouTube, and then I'll try to I'll try to just be like professional, you know, just try to be like, this is what I'm doing here. This is why. Move on. This is here. This is here. This is here. You won't hear, hear a single naughty joke from me. You know what I'm saying? Um, we'll practice. We'll practice. <laughs> uh, let's see here. 
Um, girls got issues. I was in Houston. Were you at Houston Dog Show when I was there that year? Or did I meet you? Girls got issues. No, because I met a, I met several groomers there during that show, and I I loved it. Mariana um, Dottie, I met her. What? I think it's Andrea. I think it's on Andrea. Andrea, I think. Oh, man, why is that name not coming to me? Anyways, Helen Daniels, I feel your pain. I, I feel your pain. Try being nearly 50. Constant, yeah, arm, elbow, shoulder pain. Yeah. And you know what it is? It's right here. Ah, right here. And they're saying that you have to massage that out. It's because that one, that that's like a knot right there. It's like a tight muscle. And that's what's ah, causing that pain. And so yeah, it, it's tennis elbow is basically what it is. And so you have to just massage that right there. Oh, and it feels much better now. Ooh, ooh, look at that. Uh-huh. Nice. <laughs> that's good. Okay. Um, can you recommend an elbow strap, June? Uh, no. We have to work through through it, don't we? Can you recommend an elbow strap, June? I don't use elbow straps. I just try to constantly stretch it out like this. You know, stretch. Because oh, when you do this, you'll feel this stretching. You know, just stretch. Oh, you know, lots of stretching. Uh, so when I come home, um, I take a shower. I, you know, I turn on some, you, you know, YouTube or Netflix or whatever, you know, to try to wind down and I'll stretch. That's when I use time to stretch my legs, stretch everything out. Otherwise, wake up in cramps, you know, um, plenty of water, you know, plenty of water to drink. Um, you know, I try to remind myself to eat a banana, right? Because I hear the potassium helps. So, yeah, I don't have any um, elbow straps or anything like that, but I got these back straps, baby. Okay, that was stupid. Why did I do that? Okay, um, Claire says, my brother is deaf. Definitely the vibrations for your dog. I used to stamp my foot for my old girl who was 16 and deaf. Uh-huh, yeah, so that makes sense because I'll, I'll, I'll even pull out my whistle and whistle at her. It used to work, but now it, even the whistle she can't hear. So I'll just clap and then... Sometimes she'll hear the clap and you'll see her turn like towards the clapping and yeah, she'll come. But during the day though, while the sun is out, she, she will kind of see where we are, you know, cause we'll walk a little further and I'll check back and see where she is. And then she'll kind of look around and then I'll, I'll, I'll do like this. And then she sees me and she'll, she'll come. So I think she sees like shadows, you know, when there's light out, when the sun is out, when it starts to get darker. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we might probably stay out there till it gets dark. So what I might do is just get like a really long leash I have for Angel. And that way um, I don't, you know, she doesn't feel like she's being rushed and pulled, but she still feels like she's connected to us. So she can almost, you know, she doesn't feel lost by herself out there in the dark. Um, let's see here. Uh, no, I wasn't there. Just been to the one in Pasadena. Want to go to the Atlanta show? Yeah, if you ever come to the Atlanta show, let me know. Because I'm not going to be there. I don't like those trade shows anymore. Um, I feel like it's just a fucking den of vipers. Um, they're just there to take advantage of newer groomers' excitement and eagerness and naivety. Their innocence. You know, a lot of groomers, when they come into the grooming industry, wide-eyed, eager, full of excitement, naive, innocent. And that's how I was. And they totally take advantage of that. And then... It's only after you go to the trade shows and you go to different ones. I started traveling around, going to the one in Las Vegas, you know, the one up in New Jersey, the Houston one, you know, like, um, and going in the Atlanta trade, Atlanta pet fair one, going year after year because it's here in my backyard and realizing they're not really changing anything up. They're not really looking to improve. They're teaching the same, sh same shit, the same classes they did three years ago. I took the same, like, there's no, even, not even a point, you know, like. They're not even changing up the teacher sometimes. Still, it's the same person teaching the same shit, you know? And sometimes they'll change up the name of the class or whatever. It's just like, but when you go and you take the class, you paid money, you sit there, you're just like, you're the same shit. So I don't know. And then and then when you go into the trade, sh trade show floor, it's not like you get great deals that, you know, that great, you know? Not enough to justify all the costs it, it takes to travel to Atlanta, you know, for wherever you're coming from, Girls Got Issues, you know, all the travel costs, hotel and everything. And you go there and you just feel like, where are the deals? Where are the show specials? You want, I could have just bought this on Amazon or online, you know? And yeah, I might have saved a little bit by being here, but it cost me so much more to get here, you know? And then, 
yeah and then it's like you leave the show and you just kind of feel like oh man and then you start feeling like guilty, like, oh, I'm having a bad attitude. You know, I got to look at it a positive way. Look at all these other groomers talking so great about it. Everyone loved it. Everyone had such a great time. I don't want to be look like the negative, only negative one, having, you know, only complainer, like I'm complaining or anything. And then everybody's going to start making me look like I'm, I, you know, I got a bad attitude or something. You know, it's like, no, that was hard earned money that I spent to go to those shows to try to improve my my career, you know, like to try to improve my skills and everything. And it did help the first couple of years I went. But after that, it's like, hey, it's redundant, you know. And I just felt like, okay, this this is a sham. This is what they've been doing for the past 20, 30 years. And they haven't changed up shit. If you look at some of the pictures that they take for the winners of the comp- grooming competitions and stuff, you look at the dog trade shows, not even the grooming competitions. Look at the um, dog shows, you know, just the regular dog shows. Have you ever seen in the pictures of the winners? The judge looks like he he just fucking time warped from 1950. You know what I'm saying? They still got those big old glasses, some of them. They got those fucking weird 1950s, like, brown linen suits or something. You know, it's like weird, you know, fucking. And then the the background, everything. I mean, even the picture grain, it looks like, don't they have a smartphone? I mean, a smartphone probably would have taken a better quality picture than that. Like, it looks like they shot it with the fucking 1980s camera even. Boof, with the big flash that boof, you know, it's like they've changed nothing over the past 20, 30 years. No wonder the grooming industry is just getting worse and worse under their watch. You know what I'm saying? It's not hasn't really gotten better, has it? Groomers aren't really getting that respected, are they? Why do you think I fired 75% of my clients? Because they just didn't respect me and they didn't understand it. They didn't appreciate what I was doing because groomers are looked at as dirty dog washers. Like we got a dirty job. We're unskilled. Like you know, the only people that groom dogs are people that couldn't get a college education or something. You know, it's like that's how the way that we're, grooming industry is looked at. And then they they lured me up to New, New Jersey, New York, New Jersey for this world dog grooming show where they were going to put the grooming industry on a spotlight. They said that they were going to shine a positive light on the industry and put them front and center. No, they stuck them down in the garage, in the parking deck where two groomers tripped over electrical wires and one busted her knee. And nobody said... Nobody cared. You know, they just made it like it was a joke. And it's not a joke. Tony Ferguson, a, 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 you know, mixed martial arts fighter for the UFC, he had to pull out a fight two days before the fight because he tripped over electrical wires at a press conference. He walked away from a multi-million dollar payday because his knee got busted tripping over electrical wires. Now tell me that that groomer tripping over the electrical wire and busting her knee, now tell me that's a joke. It's not a joke. It's not funny. So... <clears throat> And everything. They just lied about everything. And then when I confronted them about it, they lied about that. You know, they made me make a, they asked me to make a retraction video of everything I said uh, based on lies. And then when I confronted them about the lies, hey, they just kept lying. I was like, why did you lie to me? I messaged them. I was like, why did you lie to me? And they said, about what? He said, oh, about what? And I was like, you told me you emailed all the groomers that competed at that show. You apologized to them. I contacted a few of them and they didn't hear shit from you. Why did you lie to me? <clears throat> and then he said, oh, I may have misspoke. I didn't email the groomers. I emailed the vendors and apologized to them. So I emailed one of my, one of the vendors that I knew, the sh- one of these shampoo company guys. I asked him, you know, did you get an apology from, from that guy? He was like, what are you talking about? He was like, I lost so much money at that show. I spent so much money on that show. And yeah, I didn't get any apology or anything. You know, I don't know what you're talking about. That's when I just stopped dealing with them altogether. I decided it's a waste of my time because guess what? When you ask a liar, hey, are you a liar? They'll say, no, I'm not a liar. You know, <laughs> you should expect that. And then when you ask a liar, hey, um, you actually are a liar. I, I, I found this is the evidence. You know, you actually are a liar. So could you stop lying for me? They'll say, sure thing. <laughs> because liars lie. That's what they do. You know, like, let's not be naive. Let's not try to change it. I just understand now. The grooming industry is um, led and being run by a bunch of liars. So I don't deal with them anymore. So if you do go to the Atlanta Pet Show, Girls Got Issues, if you do come to Atlanta, let me know. I'd be so happy to show you around, hang out with you. But I'm not going to the trade show. Mmm. Ah, that coffee. Best part of waking up. It's Folgers. Anyways, this is Folgers. <laughs> and I, my, my, um, mentor my very first mentor he used to work for procter and gamble in their marketing department 
<laughs> so Folgers was one of his projects, and he says he hates Starbucks. <laughs> and I was like, why? And he explained to me, Starbucks is actually um, a bad, not not a good cup of coffee. <laughs> he was like, a Folgers is actually a better cup of coffee. Anybody who knows their coffee, he's like, talk to any coffee connoisseur. Starbucks serves over-roasted coffee beans. And I was like, oh, what? And he was like, yeah, but that's how they branded themselves. We were talking about branding. And he was like, they, they um, separated themselves from everyone else. You know, they distinguished themselves by, by making this very distinctive taste, this very strong tasting coffee because the beans are over roasted. And he was saying, and also their, their, their first, um, I guess, shtick was um, that they, they hand pressed every cup. Right, that was their thing. They hand press everything, every every cup of coffee. And, you know, it's it's uh, oh that over roasted. So he's saying whenever you walk into Starbucks, boom, you know you're in a Starbucks. When you taste a cup of their their um, caramel macchiato, whatever you know what I like to get, it's like oh wow, that's Starbucks, right? You know, and you start to crave it. You start to almost miss it sometimes, right? And that's they they did an incredible job branding themselves like that, right? Separating themselves from the crowd. But he's saying, actually, Folgers is the better cup of coffee. It's the best part of waking up. Anyways, um, so yeah, that's, you know, so think about that. When you're, as a groomer, when you're starting your own business or, or doing anything, think about how, that's the thing. If you talk to other groomers, other groomers say, June, the groomer, what he's doing is actually wrong. You know, spending three, four hours combing all that junk out of the skin and everything, just shave it down. You'll be done in an hour, hour and a half. Don't don't spend five hours. It's not right, right? That's what a lot of groomers may say. But hey, if you want a cup of Starbucks, Starbucks is the only place in town. You know what I'm saying? And if you want my service, guess what? There's no one else offering it, at least that I know of here in Atlanta. That's how I distinguished myself, separated myself from the crowd, right? Other groomers won't do what I do. It's not that they can't, they just won't because it's crazy. And I only realized how crazy it was when I thought about paying somebody what I'm getting paid to do what I do. That's when I was like, holy shit, that's crazy. <laughs> but guess what? It's how I branded myself. You know, it's, it's what people expect when they hire me. It's why I get to drive into these mansions with my shitty Corolla covered in dirt. Because they're not hiring me, June. They're hiring June the groomer, the guy that will give their dog a beautiful haircut and not shave them, even though they neglected their dog for the past five, six weeks. <clears throat> um, let me see here. Um, let's see. Claire says, a physio told me, Helen... To make sure you stretch for 20 seconds at least, told me Helen. Oh, she's talking to Helen probably. Okay, so Claire is talking to Helen. She's saying, a physio told me, Helen, to make sure you stretch for 20 seconds at least. Um, if you guys can keep the chatter down in the back of the room, you know what I'm talking about? Shoot. So we're taking it out in the hallway. You know what I'm saying? Disturbing class, talking to each other. <laughs> um, Helen St. Daniel says, oh. Glad you said that. Why waste the money? Right, girls got issues? If I could save you the trouble and then save you the fake, excited Facebook posts and Instagram posts, acting like you're so excited to be there and happy to be there when you're actually not and you're actually getting ripped off, you know what I'm saying? But you don't want to say anything because then all the other groomers in this cult-like environment are going to start making you look like you're a complainer, you're a negative person, you know? When you're actually just being real, you're actually seeing it for what it is. <clears throat> um, let me see here. Thank you, June and Claire. I will definitely make sure I stretch every day. Stretching. Stretching is the key. You got to stretch. Um, Terry K. Wow, that's terrible. Yeah, and I probably, I pro I'm probably going to get contacted by a lawyer maybe for even talking about this. Because I remember last time he came up to me shaking his finger because I said all this. Um, you know, saying you better, you better lawyer up. You're going to hear from my lawyers. Why? Cause I told, I talked about my experience about, you know, what would I say something that was untrue? Did I make something up? You know? And that's why I, lo I looked at him and I was like, do I look like I give a fuck? 
but really I gave a lot of fucks inside I was shaking you know like duck on water on the surface you look calm because I didn't want him to see how scared I was when he brought up lawyer but yeah I was like you think I give a fuck but anyways it, it actually I was thinking about it it'll only make them look worse if they come after me legally you know what I'm saying it's like hey the lady doth protest too much methinks um girls got issues awesome june thanks for the info i've been realizing this also about our industry but try to keep hope your next gig should be transforming the industry nah nah here's why girls got issues i used to i used to be so deluded i used to be delusional and thinking that i'm some so I, I have this greatness inside of me that just needs to come out and I'm going to change this world. I'm going to do something so great for this world. You know, I, I was so dumb, not dumb, naive thinking this way when I was younger. That's why I wanted to be a pastor. You know, that's why I wanted to do, tra- you know, travel the world as an evangelist. I thought I was going to change the world or something. I was meant to change the world, right? That was so delusional and egotistical. My ego was so huge. Now that I think about it, I was self-righteous, <clears throat> judgmental, ego- egotistical, especially when I was a senior in high school and I was a senior class pastor. Oh man, do not sin in front of me, lest you be stricken. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Lest, lest you die that day. Thou shalt die that is this very day, you know? Um, so yeah, I was like that. Um, and I'm not proud of it. And I only realized how much I was like that, you know, once I snapped out of it. And um, anyways, once I started getting into stoicism, uh, Ryan Holiday on the Daily Stoic podcast, he said something that really hit me, hit me hard. He said, does anybody remember JFK's vice president? I don't, right? John F. Kennedy. Does anybody remember his birthday? I don't, you know, does anybody remember Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday if it wasn't celebrated on the calendar, right? And that man did a lot. He did great. He was a great man, right? What about Abraham Lincoln? If it wasn't, if that, if his birthday wasn't on the calendar, would anybody remember? Does anybody remember Abraham Lincoln's vice president? And that man freed the slaves. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we think to ourselves, we're going to do some great thing and history is going to remember us. Will they really? Do we care? Do we really care about all these great men that did all these great things? What about Thomas Edison and Albert Albert Einstein? Do you know their birthdays? Probably not, right? Do you know whether or not they had wives or kids? I don't, you know? I know nothing about them. I just know their name and what they did, right? Or, or what, the, the one major accomplishment that, you know, e equals MC squared, you know, Thomas Edison, whatever. My point is, why was I kidding myself into thinking that I need to do some great thing with my time here on earth. And I need to do some great thing to change this world. When actually, no matter how great of a thing I do, my grandchildren probably won't even remember my name. I don't know my grandparents' names, you know? I just know that my my grandfather on my mom's side is Mr. Kim. <laughs> and my grandfather on my dad's side is Mr. Yoon. I don't know their first middle name. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know my great grandparents' names. I don't remember my grandparents' birthdays. You know what I'm saying? So that's when I was thinking, oh, well then, if I don't have, if I don't owe this world something, you know, for my existence here, I need to do some great thing and change the world for the better in order to make my existence here um, acceptable, tolerable, I guess, you know? It's like, no, you're, I'm already here. I've already won. You know, life is an infinite game. It's not a finite game. The difference is, Simon Sinek talks about this. The difference is a finite game has its it's rules. There's a definite beginning and end. There's rules. There's a winner. There's a loser, right? Monopoly seems like an infinite game (laughs) because it never ends, but it's a finite game. It has rules and structure. You know, there's players. One person eventually wins, right? The game of life is an infinite game. There is no winning, the, the, and the point of an infinite game is not to win. The point of the infinite game for the players involved in it is to keep the game going for, for the others behind us, for everyone coming behind us. Let's keep the game going for them. That's the point of an infinite game. And I think that a lot of times people, we, we don't realize that we're playing an infinite game here on earth. 
And we kid ourselves in thinking that it's a finite game. I need to get ahead. Get ahead of who? For what? Where are you going? We're all headed to the grave. You want to go there faster? I mean, what? You know, I need, I need to make something of myself. You already are something. You're, you're a human being, you know, but I need to be somebody. You already are somebody. You're you. You know, and Malcolm, Malcolm Maltz in psycho he made the point, you are neither superior nor inferior to anyone. You're simply you. And that goes, that goes for everyone else too. Nobody is superior or inferior to you. They're simply them and you're simply you. So just be you. And how do I be me though? How do I be myself? Oh man, now I got to try to be myself. That's the key. You don't try. Trying is when you're trying to be something you're not. That's when trying comes in. When you're just being you, you just do what comes naturally. You just behave the way you want. That you that occurs naturally to you. That's it. Just be you. You don't even have to try because you already are you and you're special and you're valuable. And your time and experience here is meaningful simply because you're here. When I go out into the forest today in the wildlife management area, do you think that the goal is to catch a trout? And otherwise, if I don't catch a trout, then I've lost. I failed my day. No. Because just like Mike Costner says, there is no right or wrong way to do the day. There's no wrong way to do your day unless you believe there's a right way to do it. So when I'm out there exploring the forest, getting to know it better, and seeing who knows what I'm going to see when I go out there, that part of the excitement is that uncertainty. Spending the day out there with my dogs, you know, being next to the river, casting, you know, getting better at casting and learning, like getting the feel. Is that is that a is that a tug? Is that a bite? Or is that just you know my bait dragging on the ground? Did it catch on a piece of wood? Learning that through experience, feeling it. Even if I walk out of there empty-handed, I walk out of there full of experiences, right? Full of memories with my dogs. That's a win because life is not a finite game. It's not about what you achieve and what you win or accomplish. It's about your experience here and making sure we, we take care of this planet the best we can for others who are coming into the game behind us, right? Just like Steve Green says, oh, may all who come behind us Find us faithful, right? May the fire of our devotion light their way. And the footprints that we leave, lead them to believe. And the lives we live, inspire them to obey, right? Let the lives we live, let the footprints we live, inspire the the ones coming behind us, right? Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful, right? That's the point of life, I think. And that's, that's, how, that's why I want to tell people, like, you're here. You're breathing. You've already won. You know what I'm saying? Now, just think about what would make your time here meaningful, not what would make you get ahead of someone else. Because who cares? The richest man on earth and the poorest man on earth, they both get buried in the ground. You know? So if you really want to win at the game of life, maybe as you come out of your mother's womb, you know what I'm saying? As you come out of your mother's womb, just shoot out, bam, and dive, boom, dive right into your grave. Winner. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Accomplish life the fastest. You know what I'm saying? Or I guess um, try to rule the whole world, right? Try to be the richest man in the world. You own everything in the world, you know, and people despise you. And you go to your grave so lonely, no one really being able to relate to you, no one really understanding you, and you not really understanding anyone. Some people are so poor, all they have is money. You know? And it's like he goes to his grave thinking he won, but knowing in his heart he lost. Um, Let me see here. Um, the best coffee, Greek coffee, TG, TG. Oh, nice. I got to try some Greek coffee. I mean, who knew? I I never even thought of that. Um, girls got issues. Love is action. Three to four hours is love of the animal, not the money. Exactly. Exactly. I do it. That's why when I was finding these clients, like I was telling them it was never about the money. Why do you think I did all that? It was never about the money. It was about trying to do something 
meaningful with my life, feeling like I'm serving others and helping others and helping this dog feel better and feel good about themselves and helping the family feel great, you know, creating that moment of joy and happiness for everybody. That's why I did it. That was my reward. You know, the paycheck was just necessary because it is an energy exchange. And I would throw the universe off balance if I did not accept some form of payment for what I did. You know, it's an energy exchange. All right. Um, let me see. Before I go, I'm going to just catch up on these comments and then just try to just try to wrap up my thought about having an exit exit plan. You know, so and, and I'll share what my current one is because it keeps changing. OK. Um, Cassandra Negri. What's up, Cassandra? I recognize that name. What's up? Welcome back. Um, hi, June. Thanks for your previous advice regarding grooming for a large franchise and not being able to deliver quality grooms in alignment with my values. Awesome, Cassandra. That's awesome. I'm glad that something I shared was helpful to you because most of it is <laughs> most of it is rubbish. Um, Angela, what's up? Cassandra Negri. I can confirm that grooming is one of the callings of one of my callings, and I have a solid plan in place to be able to work for myself within five years. There's a big groomer shortage in my local area, making me valuable. Exactly. Scarcity builds value, right? Scarcity builds value. So the more scarce you become, the more, the more demand there is and the less supply there is. It's just, it's just economics, right? Less supply, more demand, you become more valuable, right? Um, so, okay, now let me just uh, wrap this up real quick with my current exit strategy here, right, here in Atlanta. So um, I have not really told any of my clients yet that I, I'm going to be moving to Alaska in the spring um, because uh, I'm going to wait for my mom to come back from Alaska the, on the 23rd. So in, in a couple of weeks, in a few weeks, once she comes back from Alaska, I'm going to pick her up at the airport and we're really going to just cemented talk like real for real are we doing this you know and then once i have a good timeline okay like you know april next year or maybe june next year you know because we gotta we gotta sell the house um so yeah once we once i get like a good idea a good um what did they call it? like a, bru a blueprint of what it's going to look like and when i'm actually going to move to alaska then i'm going to tell my clients because right now why worry them if it's not really even for sure you know um, it's like 90% for sure, but you know, I want to be hundred percent before I worry anybody. So once I understand, and once I know uh, for sure what, when I'm going to move, I'm going to let my clients know, um, and then start each with each groom, which each appointment, just, you know, try to show them a little bit more, a little bit more of how to, how to actually get it to where they can take their dog to any local groomer and their groomer can give their dog a nice haircut. There would be no excuse for that groomer to shave their dog, you know, but the the owner has to put in their part, you know, and comb their dog out properly so that the groomer can give them a nice haircut, right? Because most groomers only have about an hour and a half, two hours max to work on your dog. That gives them enough time to wash because the washing takes about 30 minutes, right? To lather them, rinse them off, about 30 minutes. And then drying takes about another 30 minutes. That's an hour right there, just washing and drying. You know, now they only have about 30 minutes to an hour at most to do a haircut. So that's why your dog's getting shaved. But if you comb your dog on a regular basis, pretty much every day, and you work out all of those little tangles and everything like that, then when you take your dog to the groomer, they can get their dog washed quicker. It won't take 30 minutes. It'll take maybe 15 Right. Because all that junk and everything that's absorbing all the soap and water and, you know, it's, it's all worked out. You combed it out for them. So now their dog is going to rinse faster, lather faster. So the, the wash only takes 15 minutes. Then drying them will actually take faster, too, because they don't have all that dead coat in there. You know, again, holding on to the moisture, causing the coat to not dry faster. So by working all that out. Now the drying only takes 15 minutes. So now instead of the bath and dry taking an hour, the bath and dry only takes 30 minutes. Now that groomer has an hour to really give your dog a nice haircut and they don't have to worry about little tangles and snags in their coat because you worked it all out for them, you're going to love that groomer and that groomer is going to love you. And that's it. That's the secret. Um, so I'm going to start showing my clients this you know, and how to properly comb their dogs out. Because they tell me that they're combing their dogs. But that would be like me telling a dentist, I brush my teeth every day. 
And if I had really bad teeth and teeth pain and gum disease, he would say, maybe you're not, te- maybe you're not using the right thing, the right brush. Maybe you're not using, maybe you're not doing it the right way, you know? So that's the approach I'm going to take with my clients. Make sure I, I can, you know, I can leave here feeling like I've given them everything that they need to be able to continue getting the same quality haircuts that they're used to. It's just that instead of the groomer putting in three, four hours of sweat, combing all that out, they're going to do a little bit every day. And then the groomer, all they have to do is wash, dry, haircut, hour and a half, they're good, you know? Um, And that's why it takes me four or five hours on the dog, because really, it's like an hour and a half for the bath and dry and haircut, but I'm spending two, three hours, you know, getting it to the point where I can do that. So that's my plan for my clients. And then for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep um, practicing. Um, like, like I said, tomorrow, um, I'll put my dog on the table, put my camera up, my, my phone up, and start doing grooming demonst- demonstrations for my dog, a weenie, tomorrow. And maybe even my dog, Dexter, when I groom him next, because he has short coat. It's different, but still a lot of work. And show, you know, show Dexter again. I've done my, I've done my three dogs on my YouTube channel before, but I edited it, you know, and with music and everything. Maybe what I'm going to do is just stream it live so they can just see start to finish all the grunt work, all the time, patience, sweat, right? So that's what I'm going to do, start doing that so I can get better at it. So when I move to Alaska, I can start doing grooming videos um, and and maybe even edit it down to where I could, you know, possibly make a Udemy account and put my grooming demonstrations, you know, my grooming courses, I guess I'll call them, on Udemy. Um, That way, if anybody wants to, they can, you know, take, you know what, actually, no, I don't, I don't think I want to do that. I think I'm just going to keep, keep everything on this channel. That way it's free. Because I, I do like, because I remember when I first started, I just didn't have the resources. My, I borrowed, I borrowed my mom's credit card and put $800 on it to buy the tools and everything I needed to get started. I didn't have any resources. I didn't have the extra resources to pay for classes and learn all this stuff. And that's why when I did pay for the Atlanta Pet Fair, and I went, I took all this class and everything. I I really took a lot of notes. I put my head down. I, I took all the notes and everything. And I remember um, even like some, some people were snickering at me, you know, kind of looking at me and everything and kind of making fun of me because, yeah, I was writing down everything. And it's like, yeah, laugh at me what if you want, you know, socialize if you want. But they left there with some new friends. I left there with new information. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and... So yeah, but anyways, I, uh, it was just, that's why it was so disappointing to me when I would go year after year and it wasn't any getting any better. It was just the same and it was the same classes and everything. It's like, it kind of made me a little upset because it's like, wait a minute, I'm working way too hard and this hard earned money is what I'm spending to take these classes, try to get better each year. And it's like, they don't have any like advanced, intermediate, advanced classes or nothing. It's just all the same classes, you know? It's like, so yeah, like, I don't know. So anyways, yeah, I'm just, I think I'm going to just make it on YouTube, you know, just keep everything on YouTube, on this channel. That way it'll be free for any new groomer coming in. They'll have the information that I had to pay a lot of money for. Um, not just money, but time, sacrificing that time away from work, traveling, the cost that that, you know, the cost of traveling, all of that. Um, but yeah. And then, so I'll keep making grooming videos cause I'm going to still have to groom my own dogs. Even if I'm not a groomer in Alaska, which I am going to be, um, I'm probably just going to find a shop where I could just groom, you know, maybe two, three days out of the week, you know, maybe four days a week. Um, but no more than four days a week and then use the other three days to camp, hike, fish, do all that up in Alaska. But also I got to groom my own dogs. And so whenever I groom my own dogs, I could, I can show on YouTube, uh, stream it. And then I was also thinking I, I want to continue making bows because it's a lot of fun and it, it's like a creative outlet for me, but it's not just something that's like a creative piece of artwork. It's a functioning, working piece of artwork. You know, you take it out there and you can actually catch yourself some food, you know, or even protect yourself. You could use it as self-protection even, you know, but it's like a working piece of art that you carve out of a piece of wood you make by hand, you know, like, so I want to really, uh, I have another, I have another piece of a uh, board downstairs in my garage. It's, I've been aging it so that I can carve it down and 
So I've been talking about it, but yeah, um, I need to get started on my next bow. But yeah, I was thinking if once I get better at it and I feel like I can stand behind the work, uh, yeah, start making it really beautiful, you know, and design it really beautifully, paint it maybe even, and sell it on eBay, you know, um, or even Amazon. Start my own Amazon store and sell my bows on Amazon or something, you know, who knows. Um, and then also I have a book idea that I've been talking about. I actually um, shared the the whole premise of the book, the whole story pretty much on my podcast, The Tao of June. <clears throat> um, but yeah, it's going to be like a story, a, sh- a short story, a fiction short story um, about life pretty much, about like the meaning of life and how this person figures it out at the very end of his life, kind of when it's too late. Um, and hopefully that'll be a lesson for all of us, you know? So I have this idea, this story, short story that I want to write and publish. And so I'll, I'll probably do that as well. Maybe I'll just keep writing books, you know, on my spare time. Just keep writing books, publish it on Amazon. So that's my plan. That's my plan, you know? And that's my exit strategy, you know? If, once I get too old or I feel like I'm just not, I just don't want to groom dogs anymore then yeah, I can be an author, just just dedicate myself into being a real, you know, just be an author, write books, make bows, you know, become a bowyer and sell my bows online. Yeah, and then my YouTube channel, my believe it or not, my YouTube channel produces a monthly income every month, passive income, you know. Um, my affiliate links, Amazon affiliate links, the, all the old, so the old videos that have those links to the products and everything, they still produce money for me. You know what I'm saying? It's like people click those links on those old videos and they buy stuff on Amazon. I get a commission for it, you know? So it really is, I feel so happy and grateful now because money comes to me from multiple sources in increasing quantities on a continual basis. And so I am so happy and grateful now for that. But um, I this is all stuff that I put in I put the work in years ago, you know, I started this channel back in 2012, you know, like almost 10 years. So yeah, I mean, I guess what I want to, what I want to inspire, not, not, I'm not trying to impress you. I'm not trying to impress anyone. I'm just trying to impress upon you the different things you could do. And even if it's not generating any money or any traction at all, this channel only had 2000 subscribers five years into it, I think, like three or four or five years into it, like 2,000 subscribers, you know, it took a long time to gain traction, but it's okay because now, look, I mean, it's just, it's growing on its own, you know, Um. so yeah, just, I want to, I want to, you know, not ask you, yeah, I guess maybe a call to action, do things today that your future self will thank you for, you know, start putting in a little time and effort, maybe uh, creating something that you don't actually have to sell all the time, but it's there if people want it, and that will produce some income for you. Um, you know, writing my books, public, my the art of grooming and the four steps to a beautiful groom. You know, like the second book, actually, I wasn't even going to write it, but um, there's a lady in Arizona when I moved to Utah. She was so upset that I wasn't going to be able to groom her dog anymore. And she was like, do you have your process written down anywhere? Do you have it published anywhere, like a book or anything? And I was like, well, I talk about it on my blog. I mean, there's information. That I wrote articles about my four steps on my blog and stuff. You know, I explained it in there. And she's like, you need to make a book out of it. She was like, you know, people need to know your process. She, she's like, other people need to be able to do it too, you know? And so I was like, okay, I mean, maybe. So, yeah, that's when I, I wrote the second book. Um, the four steps to a beautiful groom, just, you know, explaining my process in each step. Um, But yeah, it's like by doing that, you know, it's like now that these books are producing a passive income for me, you know, and more than that, though, I'm just glad that I got these books out of me, you know, because these books would have stayed inside me and they would have gone to the grave with me. And Les Brown, he says it best. He says, Imagine you're on your deathbed and all the ideas and inspirations that came to you, they're standing around your deathbed, looking at you with angry eyes. And they're asking you, why didn't you give us life? Why didn't you do something? We came to you because you had everything 
that you needed. You, you were capable of giving us life. That's why we came to you. And you now we have to die with you. Now all of us have to die with you. And no one will ever know about these ideas or inspirations you had. You know? That really, oh, I got goosebumps right now. And it's like that really gave me the chills. And I was thinking, I'm a coward. And I'm scared of criticism. And I'm scared of people saying negative things about me. But I'm more scared of that. I'm more scared of having those ideas, those book ideas, those you know YouTube video ideas, those all the idea of even talking about this. What's your exit strategy? Do you have a plan of what you're gonna do if you can't work anymore? If you can't groom physically groom anymore, what are you gonna do? You know, by doing this, I'm getting these ideas out of me, and that way, when I go to my deathbed and they come to me with angry eyes, I can say. Hey, I know I messed up on the delivery. <laughs> the presentation could have been better. Yeah, I admit that. But at least I did something. You got, uh, you know, like people have an idea of what you guys, <laughs> you know, I mean, like, get away from me. Shoot, with your angry eyes. Go somewhere else with those angry eyes. You know what I'm saying? Let me die in peace. Shoot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I sang those songs. I wrote those books. You know what I'm saying? Shoot, get away from me. Um, let me see here. Um... Uh, let's see. Uh, Girls Got Issues says, amen. I don't even know what she's saying amen to, but that's usually the response I draw. Whatever I talk, anything I say, the cashier at the at the Starbucks even, you know, I'm like, can I get a caramel macchiato? Because I like caramel macchiatos. And she says, amen. I don't know why. I don't know why everywhere I go, you know, go to Publix, you know, buy a pub sub, you know what I'm saying? Get myself a nice pub sub. It doesn't get better than a public sub for me. But anyways, yeah, cashier, do you find everything you needed okay? So, yeah, I got my pub sub, you know? I love pub subs, and I'm going to have a great day. And she says, amen. I'm like, what is going on? Why is everybody saying amen to me? So that's just my life. This is daily day, you know? I'm used to it now. So um, random amen, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, Cassandra says, I love the idea of bringing education to your clients. I've been doing it for the past five years, but I think seven years, actually, because I started, I can't move back in 2015, seven years. But a lot of these clients started, I picked up around that second year. So I've been with them for five years. But still, I've been, I've been doing this, showing them and trying to explain everything. I made these YouTube videos for them. They don't watch it. So the thing is, I've been doing it for the, this whole time. But I think finally they're going to listen when I tell them, hey, I'm moving to Alaska. It is, it'll probably be a good idea to pay attention to what I'm saying. You know, because when I when I explain everything I'm talking to, I'm trying to explain what took so long. I just get this, uh huh, uh huh, yeah, yeah, oh, uh huh, uh huh, yeah, uh huh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, uh huh, uh huh. And it's like, hey, repeat back to me what I just said. And they'll probably be like, oh, well, you know, uh, you, we just love what you do, June. Uh, you know, and, and they're so happy. I'm like, Repeat back to me what I just said. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you just get this, you know. Uh, uh, and so what I'm doing right here, if you notice, uh, uh, oh, yeah, uh, good job. Uh, uh, uh. It's like, what did I just say? Can you can you repeat back to me what I just said? Where were you just now while I was explaining this? You know what I'm saying? It's like that. And so I just feel like now, finally, I'm going to say, hey, I'm moving to Alaska. <laughs> I'm going to the other side of the world, you know? It might be a good idea for you to pay attention to what I'm saying so that your dog doesn't get scalped. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, um, but who knows? I'm going to make an attempt. And if they still pull that, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Thank you, Jen. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We love you, Jen. Uh-huh, uh-huh. If they pull that shit again, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to, I'm done. I've done what I could, right? I tried. How many, how many more years am I supposed to put in to try to get through to them? I don't know. Um, let me see here. <clears throat> Terry K says, yes, get all your ducks in a row. Good, ex- good exit plan. Exactly. You know, you have to have an idea of what you're going to do when, when shit goes down, because when shit hits the fan, I guarantee you, you're going to panic and it, your fight or flight response is going to kick in and you're going to start reacting emotionally. I know this. I've done it. Unless you have, unless you have a plan that you have pre-thought out deliberately you write down steps and you have a organized plan in your head when shit hits the fan 
you're still going to have a, that knee-jerk reaction to panic, but you're going to remind yourself, oh, yeah, I planned for this. You know, I, under, I know what to do next, right? Um, looking forward to your groom tomorrow. Thank you, Terry Kay. Awesome. I hope, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you there tomorrow. <laughs> Cassandra says, during this age of technology, you may be able to offer a membership type of thing, give one-on-one uh, -on -one grooming tips over FaceTime, et cetera. Yeah, but I'd rather go hunting and fishing <laughs> because I'm selfish and I'm an asshole and I've accepted that, right? I have learned that I've got to accept me for who I am right now because if I wait for me to become a better person to accept myself, I'll never accept myself because I'm never going to be that great of a guy in my own opinion. Um, let me see here. David Forge, June, have you thought about Patreon? Yeah, I have. I don't want to do it. David Forrest, also, maybe selling a class or book on how to make your dog groomable and make your groomer love you, like what you're doing for your clients or might be doing. Maybe. I mean, but that's what I've been doing with every single, almost every groom, uh, grooming video where there's a dog and I'm grooming it. I mean, that's basically what I'm doing in almost every video. You know, I ain't selling shit. If you watch all my videos, I'm not selling shit. I'm not asking you to subscribe to shit. I'm not asking you to go click on Patreon or anything. And I'm not, I never say, hey, and if you want to learn more, if you want to learn the real thing, click on this link. I don't do any of that bullshit because I don't like it. And I don't, so I don't want to do it to other people. Anyways, <laughs> see, I'm self-righteous and judgmental. I told you this. I told you this. Um, let me see here. Cassandra says, great idea, David, with the Patreon. Yeah, I don't know, man. The Patreon and everything, just asking people for money for what? Because I'm such a great guy. I'm such a great person. You owe me money. <laughs> the idea just cracks me up, man. Holy shit, man. Hey, guys, I'm going to move to Alaska. Can you go fund me? It's like, hey, man, go fuck yourself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Figure it out, motherfucker. None of us want you to go to Alaska. That's your choice. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Hey guys, I want to start a mobile, uh, a mobile um, fucking grooming company. Or no, not even that. I want to start a food truck, guys. Can you help me in my new dream of starting a food truck? You know, could you go to my GoFundMe page? <laughs> I go straight there and message them. Hey, go fuck yourself. You know what I'm saying? Figure it out, motherfucker. Oh, this is Folgers. Someone I saw somebody ask me what's in this cup. <laughs> it's Folgers, baby. Folgers. Um, but yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter what I'm drinking. I'm always like this. All righty. It's just that sometimes alcohol and heroin makes it a little worse, but you know, um, let me see here. Um, Terry K says, can you add a PayPal account? YouTube takes 30% of the super chats. I really value your chats. Oh man. I, I feel funny about doing this, but <clears throat> I'm only doing this because Terry, I know that you're going to still, <laughs> I know that you're going to still try to send me money through the super chats. Um, and I really appreciate that. And I keep telling you, don't, it makes me feel funny. Not, but if it's, if I can't stop you and you, and you don't want to do it through the super chat, my PayPal account is junethegroomer at gmail.com. It's my email address. So if you wanted to send me money through PayPal, it's junethegroomer at gmail.com. But trust me, if you do, I'm, I'm not going to be able to rest until I figure out a way to repay you, like to reciprocate. I'm even, I'm still thinking about how much you, you sent me already. You know, it's like, oh, 200 bucks already, like over 200 bucks. Like, I'm thinking like, what can I do? that would be worth $200 to do back for you, you know, like, so anyways, but Terry, um, yeah, let me know, let me know what I can do, can, you know, can I send you a copy of my book, can I send you, like, I'm, I was for real, I'll go to Hallmark, and I'll read through every single fucking card in that fucking store, and they would not kick me out, I don't care if it's closing time, you know what I'm saying, try me, that's what I'm saying, try to kick me out of that store, I'm gonna read every single fucking card until I find the one that's perfect, maybe I have to go back to number 50, you know, I'll keep it on my head and I will send you a card that, that really encapsulates, encapsulates, <laughs> you know, 
um, like really explains how I feel, how appreciative I feel. Because wow, you came out of nowhere, guns blazing, ba 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 ba. You know, it's like holy cow, who is this Terry K person just coming in hot? Anyways, uh, but yeah, but yeah, man, I don't even know what to say after that. Yeah. <laughs> um, a A Fung. See, look at that. A A Fung. He even put an amen. I don't even know why. I mean, everything I do, I just go around. People just say amen. I'm like, what? You know, I saw a squirrel the other day. I was like, hey, squirrel, you know, next Sunday is squirrel season. I might have to kill you. And that squirrel said, amen. I was like, what? Even that? Like, it's crazy, right? It's crazy. <laughs> uh, Norma Garza says, you are amazing. I truly appreciate your knowledge. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Saying, I, I prefer to go hunting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, how do I want to spend my limited time here? Because even at its longest, life is short. Even if you live to be 100. Really, I mean, the last 20 years of that, 80 to 100, are you really living, though? So let's just say you live, you live 80 good years. That's still short, man. That's still a short life. Um, yeah, let's see here. Yeah, A. Fung says, you're fine when you're drinking. Uh, David Ports, June. Patreon can be a private message board with old clients and any... And any client wanting grooming tips. Sometimes thinking outside the box is a solution. David Forge, wow. Thank you for being patient with me because I am so ignorant and sometimes stubborn too. And when you mix ignorance and stubborn, whoa, don't be ignorantly stubborn. Don't be stubbornly ignorant is what I'm saying. Don't be stubbornly ignorant. And that's the worst is like I catch myself sometimes. Not only am I ignorant, but I'm stubbornly ignorant. I'm being stubborn about it too. It's like pick one, dude. You know what I'm saying? Pick one. Either be stubborn or be ignorant. You can't be both. You know, society will eat you up, chew you out, spit you out. You know what I'm saying? Don't be stubbornly ignorant like me. Um, be open to new ideas. David, that's a great idea, actually. That's my Roomba. <laughs> um, not mine. My brother bought it. David says, June, Patreon could be a private message board with old clients and any new wanting grooming tips. I like that. I didn't even think of that. Wow, I didn't think of that. I was just thinking Patreon would be me, like with my hands out. Can you give me some money? Oh no, it could it could definitely be like a message board for my old clients when I moved to Alaska, and any new clients that I get in Alaska needing grooming tips. I never thought of that, David. Thank you so much for real. I really appreciate you putting up with my ignorance and my stubbornness like no no man fuck that i'm not doing that shit it's like hey june have you thought about this no of course i haven't mom <laughs> why do you think i'm so ignorant oh wow okay cool that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna look into that um terry k yay no worries um hey life is short for sure yeah exactly um alan Powell says, nice shirt <laughs> alan i why, 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 what is your fascination with me? Seriously, like, um, didn't I tell you I don't like you? And also, I explained why, dude. You made a video of me called June the Boomer. It's not, and the thing is, I never reported it. I never, I didn't watch the whole thing. Someone sent me the link to it, so I took a look, and I was like, oh, this motherfucker here just put it, just made a highlight reel of all of my worst moments where I blow up, you know? And I was like, all right, whatever. And I left it alone. And I started telling other people, hey, if you want to check it, <laughs> check out this video called June the Boomer. Um, so I, I was getting new views even. Uh, but for some reason, I guess it's not there anymore. Um, I, yeah, But yeah, dude, it's like you really expect somebody to like you or have any favorable feelings for you after you do that. And then you still come on my live streams and still chat it up. <laughs> like, what's wrong with you, dude? Like, I know I'm crazy, but are you crazy? You know, holy shit. Anyways, your positive uh, cuckoo banana says your positivity is beautiful. Thank you for your insights and videos. You're welcome. Thank you. Let's see what Alan says. If you move to Alaska, you're going to have to start carrying a gun. Okay, cool, Alan. Wow, that was so insightful. Good for you, bro. <laughs> but anyways, I am actually going to carry my air rifle out there to, with me today because I was talking with my daughter yesterday when I was driving over there and I had to turn back because it started to really storm on us and I don't want to be out there caught in the storm with my dogs. Um, but I was telling my, my daughter Ava that I do have to be careful out there because there's coyotes. The coyotes are becoming a problem here in Georgia. They're even showing up in our neighborhood here. Um, one of our neighbors uh, posted on our Facebook page that the coyotes were howling behind our house. 
So coyotes are definitely becoming a problem here in Georgia, and they're legal to kill any time of the year. They're always in season. Um, and so are wild boars, because wild boars are also a problem here. So I was telling my daughter, I probably should have something on me, even if it's just my air rifle, because at least if I shoot one of the coyotes with my air rifle, my pellet gun, it might scare them off, you know, because he'll make a really loud yelping sound because it's going to hurt. I mean, it might not kill him unless I hit him right in the head. And I think the pellet is small enough and, and hard enough to where it would penetrate the skull and possibly kill the, the one of the coyotes. But I'm not going to go for a kill shot. I'm just going to try to hit one of them in the hind leg or something um, just to hurt them so that they'll run away from us. They won't they won't attack us. Um, with the wild boar, uh, I, a pellet gun is going to do nothing. So it wouldn't really help. But I do have an uh, axe with me that I carry. I have a hatchet, like a smaller axe. I have a buck knife. I have a machete. Um, so I, I feel like I have a pretty good chance if a, if a boar tries to attack me, um, you know, because I'll, I'll grab my axe and just slam it down. Um, yeah, I mean, like Thor style, you know what I'm saying? Thor style call the power of lightning and just you know so that's what i'll do but really wild boars um i've been looking for them but they're hard to find and i see tracks sometimes i see some wild boar tracks but they're not i mean i actually walked out i would go out there with my bow because just in case i walked up on a wild boar but now i realize how how naive that was how, how ignorant that was because these animals don't want you to find them you know, and they were, they've, they've been, they've evolved for millions of years, thousands of years, right? To be able to smell threats, you know, to sense threats and run. So a lot of times these boars, they're like a mile away before I ever, you know, be, and they, they can smell me. They know I'm there. And so they're gone. And I never even know that they were there until I get there. And, you know, it's like, so yeah, I, I'm not really worried about um, wild boars attacking me that much. Um, if it happens, I'll deal with it. But yeah, I do want to walk out there with my with my air rifle. It'll feel me help me feel a little safer, you know, with the coyotes because I don't want coyotes attacking my dogs. Um, so yeah, but I, I I'm comfortable with the idea of walking around with the gun, with a rifle or a shotgun, something for protection. Um, I just you know, they're like six, 700 bucks, man. You know, some of them I found for like 400 bucks, but still that's a lot of money. And right now <laughs> I'm going to start a GoFundMe. <laughs> I'm going to start a GoFundMe. <laughs> Say, hey guys, I want to go hunting and I don't really feel safe without a real proper firearm. Could you guys help <laughs> pitch in so I can buy a firearm? All right. That's when you type in, Hey, go fuck yourself. Um, let me see here. I uh, a fun I uh, yeah nice, oh man, but yeah I was thinking polar bears yeah polar bears there's grizzly bears up in Alaska they're, they're a problem you know black bears yeah I mean there's bears here in Georgia too you know we got black bears so yeah it's serious um it's about twelve twenty one right now okay perfect I'll be out there like around two o'clock and then hike in because you gotta hike in there. Um, and then when I get to the river, it'll probably be around four or five ish, which is around the time I want to start fishing. And then I'll probably fish for a few hours and then hike out of there as it gets dark. And, you know, the first time I did it, I really thought it was just going to be a really fun day, just skipping in the woods. I had Disney songs playing in my head. And once it started to get dark and everything, I got serious. And that's when I started to realize, holy cow, I mean, I could get bit by a snake wild animals could attack me, you know, I could slip and fall, all kinds of stuff could happen. And that's when I started to realize like, wow, this is a, a metaphor for life. You know, going to the forest is a metaphor for life. It's beautiful life, just like life is beautiful, but it's challenging and it's difficult and it's rewarding. And there's threats around every corner, but then there's also some of the most beautiful things you'll ever see, indescribable sights right around the corner, you know, just around the bend, you know, and that's just like life. Sometimes you don't know what's coming up and sometimes it's scary and it's hard and difficult, you know, and getting over a ridge sometimes feels like it's impossible. But when you make it, you feel so proud of yourself 
and you feel so rewarded because it was difficult and challenging and scary. You know, why do we go to why do we go to Six Flags? Why do we go to theme park? So we can get scared to death, right? I think that's what life is about too. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, man, it's like we come here to have this experience to get scared to death for the thrill, right? We didn't come here for safety and security. You know, how great of a life is that? Safe and secure. You know, <clears throat> we'll put you in a room, make sure you're safe. No one ever hurts you. We're going to give you the best food. Filet mignons, lobsters all day, baby. You know, you want caviar? You got it. You know, but what kind of life is that? Safe and secure in a nice, comfortable room. They get you the most expensive bed, too. You know, you got a, like a thousand, that, worth, that bed's worth thousands of dollars. It's a purple bed, whatever, you know get the best sleep, most comfortable bed in the world. You know, we got you the we got you the best flat screen TV. You know, you got all the best shows. Yeah, right? Clams and oysters all day, whatever you want. Right? But what kind of a life is that? Right? You live to be 100 years old, safe and secure. Everyone's, you know, you're taken care of. You're wearing fancy clothes, nice comfortable clothes. For what though? You know, it's almost like watching those whales at the museum, I mean, at, at the aquarium, just swinging around in circles. It's almost sad. It's like you can see them going insane. Yeah, they're getting the best food. They're safe. They're secure. They're kids taken care of. It almost feel like these whales should thank us. We're taking such great care of them. But no, man. They probably want to just be out free in the wild. But they can die out there. Yeah, but they're dying here, aren't they? Slowly. Right? At least out there they'll have an adventure. They'll experience what they're here put on this earth for, you know, not just swimming around this big tank in a circle over and over again, just for us to look at and point at, you know? So, yeah, I mean, I just feel like life is about the adventure, you know? Even if you could sit on a beach drinking Mai Tais and margaritas all day long, how long could you possibly do that before you get bored, before you feel like a beached whale doing nothing with your life, being, being useless to everyone else, you know? You're not helping anyone. You're not doing anything great for the world or anything like that. You're not helping the planet. You're, you're a beached whale. You're just sitting there on the beach drinking Mai Tais and margaritas. How, how exciting, fun and exciting could that be after a couple of days of that? You know what I'm saying? So I think, the, I think going out into the forest, going out into the woods, really has provided me with a good metaphor for life. You know, of course I could die out there. Of course it's scary. Of course it's risky and hard and difficult. That's why I do it. That's why I'm here on earth. You know what I'm saying? Because whatever your hand, whatever work your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Do it with all your strength and all your soul. Because where we're going after this, you don't even have a choice. You can't do it if you wanted to. You know? So let's do it while we're here, while we can. Um, let's see. Terry K, have a blessed day. You too, Terry. Uh, Cuckoo, let's get you started on funding that gun. Oh, Cuckoo, thank you so much. <laughs> let's get you started on funding that gun. Oh, man. Alan says 10 millimeter because 9 millimeter won't stop a bear. Oh, man. Alan Powell. Alan, you are the strangest person I've ever met. Seriously. I mean, <laughs> if I made a video about you, um, just where I made all these, uh, put all these clips together of you just freaking out and you make, making you look like the wor worst person, um, and then, and then you caught me out on it. And then you told me that you don't like me, stay off my, my channel, you know, stop, stop clicking on my live streams. Um, if that was me, if I was you, I, I would feel uncomfortable. I wouldn't do it. But with you, you just like boldly, <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe I can learn from that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I need to be more bold like Alan. <clears throat> Clams all day and oysters. Yeah, I read that. Um, Helen says, have a good time. Stay safe. Look forward to seeing your groom tomorrow. Thank you, Helen. Uh, for your children and grandchildren, we live for others, not for ourselves. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But, yeah, you know what? That is true, though. Yeah, because if it wasn't for my kids, I know I would have taken my own life. A few years ago, it was my kids that kept me here. Um, Let me see here. Um, But that fish aim... The tank was very thankful. But that fish in the tank was very thankful. Hmm. Oh, in the tank. Okay. 
the fish did not want to die because he messes up, but they are still, but they are still around. Mm -hmm. I miss my fishy and my dogs. Life is sad. Please don't. Not a good choice. Hmm. Okay. Not really sure. <laughs> that, I think that would have been better, like a like a real conversation back and forth, because then I could follow each one. But yeah, um, yeah, but that fish in the tank, okay, you know, okay, okay, I get it. Please don't sacrifice your life. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm in a much better place now. That was during my divorce, and when I felt really ashamed, when it finally hit me of how embarrassingly I behaved, my, how embarrassing my behavior was, um, I really felt shame, regret. I, I was so just upset with myself and so sad. I can't even describe to you the, the deep sadness I felt. It was like this despair all the time. I just wanted to cry it all the time. I miss my girls all the time and I still do, but now I deal with it much more effectively now, you know, but yeah, I was just going through a really rough time, but now I, I, I have a much better outlook on life. And I figure this is my story, Amor Fati, right? Love your life, love your fate, whatever your fate is, whatever your unique story is, love it because it's yours, right? Now I accept it. And I, I, I feel like if this is my story, right? If this is my fate, I want to see how the story ends, right? They say that life, pretend that life is a movie, your life is a movie and you're the star in it. And Pretend you're the hero of your own movie, right? And sometimes this, the movie starts with, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger <clears throat> just down in the dumps, you know? Like, nursing a hangover, you know? You see beer bottles and cigarette butts and stuff, and the hero's just down in the dumps. They're, you know... But then something happens, and they, they realize that they're being called to do something to help this planet, help people, and they pull themselves together, and they they save the day, right? They, they, they do the, the, sh the difficult work that the hero does. It's called to do, right? So I remember Joe Rogan saying that, like, pretend you're that hero. You're down in the dumps right now. Shit's hit the fan, you know? And your life looks pretty rough. But imagine that that's where the movie's starting and you're the hero. Now pick up the pieces, pick, up, pick yourself up, you know, get yourself together and go after the, the goal, whatever it is, right? And let's see how the story ends. And that's the that's the perspective I have now. That's the way I look at it. If if this if my life is a story, at least worth telling to myself, then I want to see how the story ends. You know, I don't want to stop the movie early and never know how it ended. You know. Uh, let's see. Grooming, the grooming babe. Oh, the grooming babe. I should have called myself the grooming hunk. You know what I'm saying? That's where I went wrong. June the groomer? Fuck that. I should have been the grooming hunk. Anyways, that's where I went wrong. <laughs> the grooming babe says, I struggle with suicidal thoughts and depression after my husband died. My dog, Blue, our son, keeps me around. Oh my God, grooming babe. I know how that feels. Uh, sometimes it just it just kind of feels like, what's the point, you know? What's the point? Like, like living day to day, like this shit is so great. Why are we all so scared to die? Like we're going to miss the day to day grind. Like we're going to miss Netflixing every night, you know? Like we're going to miss all the people talking behind our backs and, you know, all the bills that constantly come. You know what I'm saying? Like we're going to miss this shit. Like life is so great. Why are we all so scared to die? That's why I'm, I'm, I am finally have the courage to go out there and risk death by going out in those wildlife management areas by myself, with my dog sometimes. But usually when I'm hunting, though, it's by myself. Yeah, and I'm willing to die out there because I realize living day to day is so great. <laughs> of course, I'll stick around. Of course, I'm not going to end it because, again, it's my story and I want to see how it ends. But I'm not going to avoid situations where I might die just because I'm scared to die, you know? It's like, I'm not anymore, you know? <clears throat> and I, I think I've come to the to peace of knowing that my daughters are actually super intelligent, more intelligent than me, you know? And they're wiser than me, even at this young age, 
and we have some amazing conversations. And I realized they're gonna be just fine. You know, I made it through a really difficult childhood and it made me more compassionate. It made me more sensitive to others. It made me have more empathy to people who are suffering. Other people who got beat up as a child, you know, and had to deal with it and they still love their parents, but they still have this, you know, they have to deal with that resentment that comes up sometimes, you know, even though they, we do love our parents, it's a weird, it's a weird situation. And that's why I think that that affects my relationships with others, you know, because the people that I trusted and loved the most beat the shit out of me when I was a kid, made me scared of them. So, you know, it's like, I think it does have an effect on all my relationships. I kind of go in guarded with all of them. Um, but yeah, it's like, but it, it also makes me more, interested in others, more compassionate, you know, and I feel like going through all those hard times, may, it, it helped build my character. It made me a better person. Why do I think that my kids wouldn't be capable of it? You know, I have to have enough faith in my daughters to know that they're going to get through it better than I did. You know, they'll probably come out of whatever they have to deal with even better than me because they're the better version of me. And I'm happy to leave them behind for the world, you know, to enjoy, you know, really enjoy them because they're good kids and I'm happy to leave them behind for you. Um, let's see here. Hey, hey, Fung, you are the hero. At least in my story, I am. You know what I'm saying? I have fucking that hero anthem playing in my, in my head all day long. <laughs> when I'm out in the woods, man, I hear that last Mohican song in my head. You know, I'm just like, I'm a freaking hero. Anyways, in my own mind. <laughs> Alan Powell, it's people who don't feel shame or regret who do the worst stuff. Hmm. Okay. Like you. <laughs> oh, shit. Mirror's hard to look at, isn't it? A.A. Fung says, I'm not, acted of, I'm not acted of my own death. Oh, I'm not scared of my own death is probably what A.A. What Fung means. But to feel for other deaths is most painful. Yeah, yeah. That's why i rather go out there alone when I'm hunting and stuff because I don't want anything to happen to my dogs. Like something ha happening to them, them getting hurt or possibly dying, it affects me more than the idea of me getting hurt or dying. So I, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, let's see. Alan says the grooming, ugh, whatever. Um, when it kind of, okay. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that's, uh, that's actually, Alan Powell is um, actually, uh, what would they call it? Plagiarizing. He's plagiarizing someone else when he says, <laughs> when it comes down to most people, um, when it comes down to it, most people are scared to live than they are to die. Um, and he's plagiarizing that because I remember hearing, who was it? Was it Tony Robbins or one of those guys saying that very thing? He said, most people are willing to go out and die for the truth. But are you willing to live for your truth? You know? And um, someone else, I think it was Tony Robbins that said, most people are willing to go out and die for the truth yet they're so unwilling to sit down and think about what their truth really is. You know, if you think about the Crusades and all the religious wars and everything back in the day, millions of people died, lost their lives. For what? For truths that were someone else's, not theirs, but they were willing to go out and die for someone else's truth because most people are unwilling to sit down and think about what their truth actually is. Um, he says wisdom. Yeah, here's the thing though. The fool thinks himself wise. And the wise knows himself to be a fool. That's uh, William Shakespeare. I didn't come up with that because I don't plagiarize like Alan does. And Alan is a perfect example of a fool who thinks he's wise. Anyways, <clears throat> um, yeah. And I, am, I might be a wise person, but I know myself to be a fool. That's what separates us, Alan. I want you to know that. I really don't like you. And I think that you like to go on other people's channels and you like to spout out information that you took from other people. And you like to pass it off as your own information, your own wisdom. And it's not. And you like to make yourself look good with other people's channels and other people's work. Because your own channel won't make it anywhere. Because you are a charlatan. I hope that sits with you. See you guys.